Hey everyone, it's Mark from RV Love. Welcome to our second video highlighting what we've seen here at the California RV Show. First off, I want to thank everybody for all the positive feedback on our first video. If you missed the first video, you can click on this card to go check it out, or of course, we'll link to it at the end of this video as well. So in this second video, we're going to be looking at some toy haulers, fifth wheels, the vendor haul, another class A, super C, truck campers, and some small campers. So we've got a bunch going on in this video as well, so stay tuned. One of the biggest differences between this California RV show and other RV shows we've been to is the huge focus on toy haulers. Because of proximity to places like Glamis and Desert and Dunes, there's going to be a lot of folks in this market apparently are interested in dirt bikes, ATVs, side-by-sides, big sand rails, but that is one thing we've definitely noticed at this show. Toy haulers, toy haulers, toy haulers everywhere. And but it's pretty fun for me. I love these kind of toys. Currently in a booth by a manufacturer called Attitude. They have Attitude, Stellar, and Iconic, so all three of those are pretty much all focused on toy haulers. Huge booth up this section of it, but every other manufacturer I've seen with the towable market has been bringing toy haulers to the show. Also seeing much more Super Cs and other off-road focused RVs at this show. So if you're looking to compare a bunch of toy haulers side by side, this show is a great place to go. You might notice that a lot of the footage I'm capturing, there's not a lot of people. That's because I'm getting in here before and after closing hours to capture footage while it's nice and quiet. But uh, during the day, and especially during weekend days, there's definitely a lot of folks around. Also important to point out is that when you get here the first weekend of the show, there's more units available if you're looking to buy. Because by the time you get here the second weekend, you start seeing more and more of this, sold signs. All right, behind me here is a 2020 Keystone Fusion 424. It actually is written on the outside of it that it's best in show. I went inside to check it out. I think two of the biggest innovations is, is it has a front porch that comes off the side where the entry door is. I haven't seen that before. And also in the kitchen dining room area, there was a table with little, with little swing out chairs, which I also thought was innovative. It makes the space feel very large and easy to move around in has a 12 foot six long garage for your toys, has a king size bed in the slide out, huge TV and a fireplace. Seems really livable in it. I actually like the styling too. It's got a gray cabinet with some wood tone flooring. There seems there's a more modern contemporary, like the feel of that inside. Keystone's a well-known brand as well. One of the things that people love about toy haulers is they like to have these fold out rear decks or sometimes even a side deck off the toy hauler section. This toy hauler is a little different in that it has the normal rear deck off the rear of the trailer, but it also has a side patio that's off the entry door, which I don't remember seeing before, so that's pretty unique. Some others thought it was unique as well, I guess, because this was awarded best of show here at the California RV Show. All right, let's go check out some other stuff here at the show. All right, right now I'm outside a 2020 Keystone Montana 3761FL. Keystone Montana is one of the best selling, if not the best selling fifth wheel out there. The, this particular Montana you can see has full body paint. It's a nice silver, black, and white in exterior. It also has similar theme on the colors on the inside. It has a gray wood look finish on the cabinets. Actually it looks really nice. It's got a lot of grays and calm colors. Uh, not as many browns and beiges. I'm actually pretty excited about this show in general. I've seen a lot of grays and less brown and beige so there's been a lot of that i'm starting to see make its way throughout the industry um, not just in some of the higher end coaches but this montana floor plan with a front living room and a rear bedroom both of which are elevated which provides basement storage both underneath the front and underneath the back there's a big storage area on the back behind underneath the bedroom um, the kitchen area is in the center and there's a half bath in there right off the kitchen uh, which is actually makes this a one and a half bath floor plan. The bathroom in the back off the bedroom is really large, has dual vanities and a shower. The front living room has the windshield feature uh, seen on a lot of Montanas. It's an automotive windshield. It's a nice big window on the front of the fifth wheel. There's three couches in that living room and a big TV for entertainment. A couple other notable features. This has disc brakes, has upgraded suspension, and it has 
a cold weather pack. It's for true full timing, even in cold weather. It has been rated for zero degree temperatures. So one that you could be comfortable taking to colder climates. So if you don't have big towing capacity with your existing vehicle, you might look at products from product companies like Little Guy. They have towables that are only 1,000 pounds up to 3,800 pounds, which can be towed by a wide variety of vehicles. They have off-road focused ones and on-road focused ones. Some are teardrop trailers, like this one with the kitchen out of the rear of the trailer. And they also have ones that are full stand-up trailers that you have lots of room inside with a dedicated bed and a dedicated dining area. That one's a bit heavier. That one's around 3,800 pounds, actually also around $38,000. I think they start at $15,000 for their smallest unit over here. But that one's a pretty basic unit. This one right behind me is the Explorer, which is more of a toy hauler. You could put an ATV or a couple of motorcycles or maybe just bicycles and kayaks if you want to keep yourself light and traveling with a pop-out camper on the side. There's two versions of this Luna. This was the Luna Rover, which is more off-road focused, but inside it has a bed on the floor, a small chair. Funny, it has a little fireplace and a little storage areas that are done with a marble finish, which looks kind of nice. The back area of these Luna is the kitchen. Very spacious kitchen, as long as the weather's good. You're not gonna be able to stand up inside there and you're not gonna wanna be outside cooking if the weather's bad, but when you're RV, you generally head to where the weather is good. And these are just meant for weekending, I would say. The Soul, back in the back here, that one is a true stand-up inside type RV with a nice big front windshield, which gives a nice view of where you're at, and also has a dedicated bed and a dedicated dining area and a wet bath. It comes with air conditioning and everything. Something to consider if you already have a vehicle that can tow, even if it can't tow something heavy. Here I am at the Northern Light Truck Camper booth. Now, I've seen a few of these on the road, but I was really excited to see them in person because I've been intrigued by the, <laughs> I've been intrigued by the fact that they have a two-piece fiberglass construction. And what's great about that is it's gonna, with only two pieces, there's very few seams and there's no roof seams except for where they mount a couple of the items on the roof. So it's very unlikely to leak. It also lends itself to a very well insulated, true four season truck camper, because even underneath, it's all sealed up. Everything's inside the shell. This also provides a lot of structural strength too, because they don't need framing. The strength of the structure is the structure itself. So it's very quiet inside, very well insulated, very unlikely to leak, so it's really good construction. Speaking of construction, inside it's all solid wood and high quality hinges. You can really feel the higher quality of the fit and finish of this Northern Light truck camper. Very impressed with it. So in the dry bath option, you're able to separate the two, even though the same space, you're able to keep the toilet area dry. Uh, as far as weight, Again, with the style of the construction, they keeps them a lighter weight. And with a truck camper, heavy weight at the top, being top heavy, can make the truck feel less stable. With a lighter weight truck camper, there's less of that. These range from 2,300 pounds up to 3,300 pounds for the larger one. They come in short bed and long bed configurations. As you might imagine, with only two-piece fiberglass construction, there are no models with slide-outs. They're all just as they are. They're about 98 inches wide. They have a variety of different interiors. One limited edition here has some red trim to be a little more edgy. Most of the other ones are a little bit more traditional in styling, but high quality wood, high quality fit and finish to the product in general. They all have a space to be able to include a generator. Uh, looking through the brochure, they also have optional solar panels installed. A testament to their confidence in the structural strength of this unit, they have a six year warranty on the structure instead of the one to two years you see on most other manufacturers. Really like what I'm seeing here with Northern Light truck campers. So Lance Campers is another California based RV company that builds truck campers and travel trailers. They had a big selection here at the show and they're even giving away a Lance 1475 travel trailer which is a smaller travel trailer. It could be towed by a lot of different smaller cars. It's actually a really cool little travel trailer, one that I even looked at that we could tow with our Jeep. So when you step inside this 1475, there is a one slide out, which gives it a little bit of extra room, but it's got either a couch or two chairs option that faces where the kitchen is and a bedroom in the front. It's really usable and functional space for considering such a smaller trailer. All right, so there's something really fun I gotta point out. 
as any of you that have been watching our channel for a long time and maybe have seen our ultimate makeover series you would have seen that we used a lot of marble finished things in our motorhome renovation well i think it's been really funny to walk around this show and there are so many of these 2020 model rvs that are using a marble finish or a marble appearing countertops or in the bathroom or in the kitchen i'm not claiming that that was all inspired by our renovation by any means i just think it's really interesting that a year and a half after we did that they're all over the place in this show so when you come out to the show it's not just rvs either there's companies that are selling boats there's companies that are selling off-road toys and if you already have an rv but need a new vehicle to tow it with even ford is here with a huge display of all kinds of different trucks and suvs to be able to tow your new rv around now I'm coming at you from inside an Integra Riata XL. For those of you who are not familiar with Integra, Integra used to be exclusively luxury diesel pusher motorhomes. In the last few years, they've had quite a large expansion to the line, entering into the Class C market, also into gas Class A market. This year, they also expanded into the Super C market, and this Riata XL that I'm inside is more of an entry-level diesel pusher. There's actually two versions of the Riata, a Riata and a Riata XL. The Riata has a 360 horsepower, the, three, the Riata XL has a 380 horsepower. Both of them are on Spartan chassis on the K1, which has independent front suspension, which is rare in the entry diesel market. Another difference between the Riata and the other larger Integra diesel coaches is how they're built. These use vacuum bonded walls as most RVs do. The larger luxury Integra coaches use more residential construction with residential insulation. The regular Riata, I saw one here around 300,000 MSRP. This 40 foot Riata XL is MSRP at around 360 with a show price around 280. The particular floor plan I'm in is a 40Q2. On my left hand side, there's two recliner chairs. On the right hand side there's a small sofa and then the dinette as you're in the kitchen area when you go into the back area there's a king size bed and this is a one and a half bath floor plan lots happening with the integra brand in the last couple years this year at the california show no exception all right so now i'm over at the renegade booth and for those of you who are not familiar with renegade they're a brand who focuses almost entirely on super c motorhomes They've got Super C motorhomes mostly on the Freightliner chassis. They do also offer some on a Ford F550 chassis, uh, and I believe those are even available in four-wheel drive. But again, most of them are on the Freightliner chassis and different levels of those. Coming over here to visit their booth, the biggest news and the most exciting new product they have here this year is a new shorter floor plan. It's on a 34 feet. It's 33, 11 inches. Most of the Super C's are over 35 feet, but for those who are wanting a slightly smaller Super C, this new Verona, there's a 34 VQB. A lot of the reason people love their Super C's is because they're massive towing capacity. This particular model, like other Super C's, has a larger Cummins diesel engine. I believe it's an L9. It's 350 horsepower and over 1,100 foot-pounds of torque. The towing capacity on this coach is 20,000 pounds. Most Class A motorhomes can't tow nearly that much weight and especially not very much tongue weight because the engine on diesel motorhomes is in the back. So Super C's can handle a lot of tongue weight on the rear axle and higher towing capacities in general. A lot of Super C's have a larger over cab area which usually has a bed in it. This particular one, as you can see, is a smaller section over the cab, so it actually just opens up the space and it has overhead cabinets, but it's easier to step up out of the cab area into the main living space. When you step into the coach, there's couches over on the right and kitchen space on the left. You walk back into the back and there's a nice big bed area. This shorter length would be highly maneuverable and be a lot of power to weight ratio with this coach. This coach is also loaded with high-end features like Girard awnings and diesel aqua hot heating for your hot water heating. But it feels very spacious inside, a lot of quality finishes like maple cabinets and solid surface countertops in the kitchen. A lot of manufacturers offer a Super C as part of their total lineup. Renegade pretty much only offers Super C's, so it's definitely a brand on your short list if you're checking out Super C coaches. 
In the vendor area, Julie and I spent a lot of time at the Camp California Campground Views booth with our friends Mark Kep and Bretton Donnell, who you might recognize from our remodel series. As for other highlights in the vendor area, Julie especially loved these inflatable stand-up paddle boards from Voltsurf. At only 25 pounds, they were easy for Julie to carry around to carry to the water or to carry around in your RV, even if you don't have a big RV. I thought this trailer moving equipment was really unique because it would allow you to move your trailer around your storage area without having to hook it up to a truck. It would be especially important if you have a very tight, maneuverable space. Another booth that was really popular at the show was this flagpole booth. They had a lot of custom made brackets for flagpoles and flag attachments that would make it really easy to set up and take down your flags. There were also multiple booths selling electric bikes which are becoming more and more popular in the RVing space because you can go a significant distance with very little effort and they're relatively lightweight. I was happy to see that most of the stands actually had relevance to RVs and RV living. Sometimes when you go to RV shows, the vendor tents are half filled with vendors who have little or no relevance to the lifestyle, things you might just find on Home Shopping Network. Of course, there still were some booths in the vendor area that were not RV related. Uh, there were some pain management booths and this guy who was super excited to show us his CBD bath bomb. But all in all, we really enjoyed walking through the offerings in the vendor tent. We'll include links to the, some of our highlights down in the description below from everything throughout the video. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already seen the first video, click here to check that out. And if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications of future videos. Head over to the blog at rvlove.com for more. And until next time, we'll see you on the road. What are you guys doing? We are cruising around after the closing hours of the show so we can get some footage when there's no one around. <laughs> and the lighting's good. And the lighting's good. And it's not as crowded. The lighting does it. It's actually making what? you guys both look good. And, and the temperature oh, we have a glow is perfect. About us. Yeah, the temperature is perfect. It's not that yeah, hot. Yeah, you got about 10 more seconds of that sun's going away. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. Bye.